Does green tea have the potential to block the leading hormone that is thought to cause hair loss known as DHT? And with green tea being touted as the all-in-one health supplement, is it going to help you in your hair care routine? In this video, we're going to look at exactly that. We're going to find out whether or not it can block DHT and we're going to talk about how you can start implementing green tea into your hair care routine. So guys, before we get into the video about green tea and hair loss, if you're worried about your own hair loss, you can simply go down to the description and click the link. One of our hair guard specialists is going to give you a full analysis of your hair. All you've got to do is click the link in the description and then upload a hair selfie. So guys, what you're going to learn about today in this video is we're going to find out what is green tea. We're going to talk about what could make green tea work. Then we're going to look at some of the scientific evidence around green tea. We're going to talk about some of the recommended dosages. Then we're going to talk about some of the side effects. Then we're going to look at the correlation between green tea and DHT. And then we will finish with a conclusion. So first, let's talk about what green tea actually is. Green tea was originally grown in China, but now is grown in other places as well. It can be used either as a drink or an extract, and the claims about what makes green tea effective is that it contains polyphenols and flavonoids. And just before we go any further, if you ever see the bracket and then the number, that means that we're citing some kind of resource, scientific literature, some article, something of the kind. Uh, you can get access to all of those in the description, so feel free to go and further your knowledge there. So the percentage of flavonoids in green tea is higher than can be found in most vegetables, fruits or wine, all of which have fairly large amounts. Flavonoids in particular are what gives green tea antioxidant and anti-carcinogenic qualities. Green tea also contains various vitamins uh, and minerals as well. It is packed full of things that are recommended to improve the overall quality of your health and possibly the quality of your hair. Now what people think that may make green tea work is that they attribute the effects of the reversing hair loss to the high level of antioxidants. Uh, and the other ways in which it could contribute to hair regrowth and prevention include that it improves circulation of hormones and improves blood flow. It helps inhibit testosterone production and interferes with the conversion to dihydrotestosterone, which is the leading cause, thought to be the leading cause of uh, hair loss. Also, it contains a potent antioxidant called EGCG. Uh, and fortunately, there are scientific studies which seem to back all of these claims. So now we're going to look at a few of the interesting scientific studies around green tea. So first, there was a study performed in Japan and they published a paper and that showed that a tumor that is implicated in cancer and arthritic diseases the tumor necrosis factor alpha also has effects on the hair and can result in hair loss. Green tea is able to suppress the production and development of TNF alpha, which as a result might make it a cure for hair loss. And additionally, the paper linked, sorry, the paper included information on hair growth as a result of drinking a lot of green tea and the effect this has on DHT, the latter being linked to baldness and hair growth in puberty. Then in California in USA in 2005, there was a more direct study performed and it tested the effects of drinking green tea and more specifically its polyf polyphenic compounds on hair growth in mice. The mice recruited for the study were all female and had all suffered with spontaneous hair loss on the head, neck and dorsal regions. The 60 mice were split into two groups. Group A received 50% fraction of polyphenol extract from dehydrated green tea in their drinking water for six months and group B received regular drinking water. Otherwise, both groups of mice were fed the exact same diet and lived in very similar environments. At the end of the study, researchers actually found that 33% of mice in group A had significant hair growth during the six months of treatment, whereas no hair growth at all was seen in group B, the control group. Now, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting. It is done on mice, so it's not necessarily the same for humans, but a lot of the hair studies are performed on mice, and it does suggest that there may be some uh, benefits for green tea in humans. Next, in Massachusetts, in USA, uh, prostate cancer isn't often discussed, but it's 
incident is concerning. In fact, one man out of every nine will be diagnosed with it in their lifetime. With this in mind, the researchers decided to investigate the factors that reduce the prevalence of prostate cancer in aging countries. To start, they looked at diet. Now, soy products and tea, such as green and black, are consumed much more regularly in Asia than other parts of the world. As such, researchers focused on these products to determine if they had an impact on androgen-sensitive human prostate cancer. Now, 96 mice were used in this study, and they were split into six groups. So you had control, you had SPC, black tea, green tea, SPC and black tea, SPC and green tea. Uh, and the mice were inoculated with human prostate cancer cells and serum PSA levels were taken at four and eight weeks to determine tumor take rate and tumor size. At the end of the 10 week study, the tumors were excised and weighed and blood samples were taken. And the results are there on the right. Now the results show that all groups except the control and green tea group significantly reduced final tumor weight. Green tea alone did reduce final tumor weight by 22% but not as drastically as the other active groups. Now, overall, the combination groups, which was the SPC plus black tea and SPC plus green tea, performed best. They reduced final tumor weight by 93% and 88% respectively. Serum levels of DHT were also taken, which is what we're most interested in. The black tea treatment group had greater serum testosterone concentrations and 72% lower DHT concentration than the control group. This suggests that black tea may contain components that inhibit 5-alpha reductase. On the other hand, green tea increased serum testosterone and DHT levels by 73.8% and 194% respectively. The combination of SPC and green tea did reduce DHT levels. So what does this mean? Interestingly, this study contradicts the results of the previous two studies. However, further research should be carried out before any final conclusions are made. A common theme is the research is that green tea's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties seem to be very important in supporting the growth of new hair by supporting overall health. So if you're interested in how to add green tea into your hair care routine, let's look at some of the recommended dosages. In order to get the daily recommended dose of 250 milligrams of catechins, one needs three to five cups of green tea per day. The supplement form should not be taken on an empty stomach because there is some concern over liver injury. It is unlikely for this to occur when drinking the leaves brewed as a tea, but the extract form is much more potent. There doesn't seem to be an established recommended amount of how many milligrams per day are needed to improve hair growth, but three to five cups of tea per day is considered safe for most adults unless you have an underlying liver problem. If you do have liver issues, you should speak to your physician before using green tea for hair regrowth. A high dosage is defined as 10 to 29 milligrams of green tea extract per kilogram of body weight per day. So now let's have a quick look at the side effects of green tea. There have been no reported cases of toxicity from people when who drink green tea. Toxicity can occur when using green tea extract, however. Now, green tea leaves contain polyphenols and EGCG has the highest concentration of all the polyphenols. This doesn't cause any problem if you're just drinking the tea, but an extract taken as a supplement contains a much higher concentration than just hot brewed tea. It has been documented that high doses of EGCG can lead to liver damage and aggravate any existing liver problems. As such, green tea extract should be taken with food and never on an empty stomach. If you are using green tea extract and develop any symptoms associated with liver damage, uh, discontinue using it and see your doctor. So now we're going to have a quick look at the correlation between green tea and dihydrotestosterone. So dihydrotestosterone is a sex steroid and androgen hormone. It is synthesized from testosterone in three different places in the body, the testicles, the prostate, and the hair follicles. So DHT is thought to be the main culprit when it comes to gradual natural hair loss. And the problem is that this hormone basically sticks to the follicle and piles up on it, slowly suffocating the hair follicle. When that happens, hair loss is not far behind. Luckily, the process is usually reversible and once the problem is handled, the hair often grows back. The reason why green tea could actually play a part in all, the, all that has a lot to do with the fact that its main compound is known for its ability to inhibit certain enzymes. In this case, the enzyme that is responsible for the storage of dietary fat. 
That is the main reason why green tea is so popular among dieters and it does have some medically proven qualities that can actually play a big part in the fat loss process. But perhaps even more important than its role as an enzyme inhibitor is its ability to blunt androgen receptor function. Androgen hormones such as DHD connect to the hair follicles via androgen receptors. For most people, this is fine. However, those with androgen sensitivity will experience symptoms that lead to hair miniaturization of the hair follicle. If green tea blunts androgen receptor function, then logically it can help to reduce the sensitivity of the follicles. Now the reviews on the efficacy of green tea are mixed, but overall there seem to be some positive outcomes more than negative ones. It has also been demonstrated that the use of green tea increases metabolism and contributes to improvements in a person's general health and well-being, but no firm evidence has shown it to be valuable enough to add to a daily hair care regime. That being said, green tea is only a small piece in the puzzle when it comes to hair loss and you should never be relying on just one ingredient. After all, there's no such thing as a miracle cure for hair loss. Instead, you must take a multi-pronged approach, including the use of other natural topicals, as well as other effective treatments, such as scalp massages and micro-needling. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you on green tea today. Don't forget about your free hair loss analysis down in the description. And if you've not already subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.